Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. This video is going to be a video on a new ranking video. So I came up with this idea, um, I was playing a game and I thought out of the blue, uh, just of this video idea. I know it's kind of weird, videos, video ideas just come to me. Uh, basically this tier list is going to be ranking all classes based on how good they would be without their abilities. That's really it. Uh, I've never seen anybody else do this, so I thought it would be a good idea. If you guys do go on to enjoy, make sure to drop a like if you guys are new, subscribe. I got a ring light. So yeah, sorry about that if you see glare in my glasses. I'm still trying to fix that. Yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Coming in at number 16 is going to be the Chomper class. So the Chomper class, in my opinion, is going to be the worst class in the game without their abilities. And I mean, it really is self-explanatory. Uh, they have no range at all without their abilities except for Yeti Chomper. Um, and Yeti Chomper with range is still pretty bad. Any Chomper uh, without their ability is really pointless. I mean, if if you uh, try to not use your goop and burrow or spike weed, really, you're not gonna go anywhere. I mean, sure, you'll get like a few kills here and there, but I challenge you to go get 35 kills in a turf game with no abilities. If you can do that, then congratulations. Uh, but yeah, like really, I just don't see how Chomper class would be any good without their abilities. Goop also recharges really fast, just makes the class so much better. Like if Goop re recharged a little slower, um, they would be a lot worse because just Goop is like the saving grace of the Chomper class. Chompers with no abilities, they would suck. Coming up next is the Super Brains class. So a lot like the Chomper class, uh, with basically being a close-up character with no abilities really does suck. And the thing I like about Super Brains is that his kick ability gives him a lot of momentum. Um, to either jump on, like if you use a kick and you hold jump, you go really high and you go really fast. Uh, now the reason why he isn't below Chomper is because he has more health, he deals more damage uh, with like his uh, his punching combo, and also he has a laser beam and you know the jumping thing. So that's the only reason why he's higher. But really. Um, I, a lot of the time, I'll use my kick to gain momentum to get out of a fight or to go in one. But without this, you're left just walking to it. And by the time you get there, you know, you're probably going to be dead. Um, and the thing is, he is a lot bigger than a chomper, so he can't really be as sneaky. But really, uh, the beam and the high jumping just makes him a little bit better than the chomper because it is still very possible to get kills. It's just going to be very difficult because, again, he's a close-up character. These are really the only two classes that i say are almost unplayable without their abilities. Every other class has uh, a lot of ranged characters, so really, these are the only two classes that i say are almost unusable. Coming up next is the Citrons. Now, the Citrons' main uh, ability is their ball, and it's used to move around. And, you know, without this, they move really slow. I think they're the slowest moving play in the game. And really, they just aren't that good because this, uh, a Citron that is mobile is a, is a good Citron. A Citron that's not mobile is not good. Uh, he does deal a shit ton of damage, though. Like, uh, maybe except for, like, Toxic Citron. But mostly, like, the Citrons deal a good amount of damage uh, anyways. So he isn't unusable, really. But a lot of the time, um, they're going to kind of distance from you. So anyways, you're going to be walking up to them. And, you know, they're just going to be faster than you are. Because, as I said, he's the slowest moving plant in the game. And the slowest moving character actually in the game now that I think about it. So by the time you roll up on them, they're going to be long gone or they're going to have distanced themselves enough to be able to hit you for a lot more than you can hit them. But yeah, really, he's, I don't think he would be terrible without his abilities, but knowing how OP his abilities are, uh, the shield blocking all damage, the EMP, you know, uh, stunning them for a good three seconds, the ball, and then the ball abilities, it really completely shatters um this class the citron other than the super brains on the chomper is the class that gets shattered the most without his abilities coming up next is the torchwood yes i included torchwood because he still is a class the reason why i say this i mean it's kind of obvious he is a really big target and without his leaf shield or his smoldering madness uh, and his blazing blast he's really just an easy kill if you're a soldier on a roof you're gonna have a lot easier time killing him than him killing you because first of all you deal more damage from a longer range and he is a lot more inaccurate than soldiers so he really does rely on that smoldering madness and leaf shield to take you out because he's gonna need the extra health and firing speed but i mean he's still pretty decent close up without his abilities but a lot of the times like the citron they're just gonna run away from you because you know you're tortured you have the most health in the game not including mechs and i mean you deal a pretty good amount of damage up close and you're really just super vulnerable without your abilities uh, I'd say maybe if Leaf Shield was taken away, it would kind of have the same effect. However, Smoldering Madness 
with it having infinite ammo, super fast firing speed, and fire damage, uh, people are going to be kind of afraid of you, but without your abilities, really, you're not that much of a threat. Up next is going to be the Sunflower class. Now, the reason why I chose this class is because they are really good at dealing damage. However, they don't have much health, and without their Heal Flower or their Sunbeam, they can't really do damage while healing consistently. Um, they are really good, as I said, at dealing damage. Um, but really this health is a big issue because from far away they aren't amazing. Close up with uh, you know somebody next to them uh, healing them and the heal flower to heal themselves, they're pretty good. But you know without these abilities, not really because you know they are a, a support character and support characters are known for their abilities in supporting teammates. Uh, and Sunflower just can't really do that and she can't really fend for herself all too often. So that's why she's she's gonna be kind of high on this list. Next up is All-Star. All-Star obviously is another class known for their abilities. Their ability spamming, their tackles, you know, their end punts. You know. The thing is, All-Star, the class, I feel like every single All-Star has a good primary. So I think they all deal a ton of damage. And for once, in my opinion, I feel like Motocross Star would be the best on this list considering that he takes away any plant's abilities uh, for a short period of time with his primary. It muds them, I guess. And as, as I just said, it takes away their abilities, so you have a fair fighting chance. Uh, he doesn't deal all too much damage, but at least it's primary versus primary, and not abilities versus primary, uh, as it would be if he didn't just if he just didn't have his abilities. So I feel like it would be really helpful to play Motocross Star in this situation. Any other All Star, uh, maybe, uh, but still kind of an eh class maybe without their abilities uh i think all star has some of the best abilities in the game the dummies uh they actually come in handy quite a bit with the beam bombs so you know can't really defend yourself there sprint tackle and input are more of just kind of insta kill abilities or maybe sprint tackle to get away uh whatnot um but yeah still decent class uh i guess you could say without their abilities and uh yeah coming up next is the scientist class now the reason why i put the scientist class here is mostly because of his warp and heal station the sticky bomb ability not so much, and the Mega Heal Bomb, eh. Um, but really, I feel like the Scientist is, uh, this is kind of starting to be where I think the classes start to get pretty okay, uh, like, by themselves, not just like, eh, or bad. I feel like, uh, if these characters were to have their abilities taken away for, like, a game mode, uh, just this class, I feel like they'd be able to fend for themselves a little bit, uh, but in some situations, not. But, uh, Heal Station comes in handy quite a bit with the Scientist, you know, if there's a bunch of plants placed on your Heal Station, and... You know, you have a little bit of extra health, you know, health at fire damage and ice damage. Uh, they don't affect you when you have your heal station down and also uh, you heal while you're fighting a little bit. Um, and also the warp gets you away from things, gets you in things. So I just feel like that is just really helpful. Um, definitely the best scientist here would probably be paleontologist uh, because you know, he can keep a safe distance while also doing a lot of damage. So running in there is not really going to help you since this class is obviously like a shotgun class mostly. Um, but without your abilities, not really that good. But yeah, I feel like paleontologist would be the best every other scientist pretty good uh but paleontologist uh definitely definitely going to be the best scientist uh without his abilities yeah overall pretty pretty okay class without their abilities next up is going to be engineer now engineer has also uh pretty good abilities he has mobility he has a stationary ability and he has a stun ability but really engineers primaries are actually pretty good even with AC Perry, uh, you still get that freeze effect. So, I mean, honestly, I think AC Perry is the worst engineer. And even then, maybe he's, he could still hold up uh, because, you know, his freeze effect. But every other engineer just deals a shitload of damage. Like, for example, regular engineer with his damage upgrade deals 43 damage. I mean, three shots to kill a pea shooter, that's pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, really not much needs to be said. Uh, engineer's primary just carries so hard. And with, like, even, like, Mechanic and Rudy Z very good characters and pretty decent without their abilities coming in at number eight is hover goat so hover goat it's in the name he can hover really the only reason why i'd say he's up here uh also because he deals a pretty good amount of damage with his primary but honestly he is mostly a support character and without his middle button he also isn't the, the greatest um but to be fair i don't really like his middle button that much but it does help uh, a little bit and also his speed boost does help quite a bit but he does move uh fast uh normally so that is a plus but yeah when you're getting into a fight just bunny hop a lot and hold the jump button and you'll be hovering and shooting and yeah still a pretty decent character without his abilities next up is the cactus class now the reason why i chose the cactus class is because mainly they are used to sit in the back and snipe um and the characters that aren't supposed to do that really like petrified cactus and maybe zen cactus that kind to go close up 
they can still do pretty good close up, especially uh, Petrified Cactus with her uh, detonation primary. Really solid class with other abilities. Uh, really, their RB ability isn't used too often, and when you use their LB, if it's not Potato Nugget Mine, there's really no reason to use it offensively. Uh, drone is really the only ability that I could say uh, can improve your performance of this character, but even then, this class, uh, you know, with, with their abilities are primary, you know, they're supposed to be sitting in the back and sniping, they still exceed at that regardless. So for that, uh, I, I put them right in the middle because obviously with their abilities, they uh, perform a lot better. But without them, they still do a decent job. Coming in at number six is the pirate. Kind of the same thing as the cactus, uh, except that they have a shotgun. So really, you can go up close and do really good anyways. Uh, that's basically it. Um, the barrel... Uh, you know, it, it's the barrel is really good. It, it gives you extra defense. You also deal a ton of damage when you explode at the parrot. You know, same as drone. Uh, cannon rodeo, not so much, but it's really just the shotgun that makes them better than the cactus, and that's really all. Starting up at number five is the start where the characters start to get good without their abilities, meaning that they can fend for themselves most of the time even without their abilities. So coming in at number five is going to be the pea shooter because the pea shooter class is one of if not the strongest class in the game with their abilities and without they are also still pretty good so pea shooter a uh, regular pea shooter for example has really good direct damage and pretty good splash damage now if you go with like law p um, or agent p then however you're gonna do really good because they're very accurate and they do quite a bit of damage so really every single pea shooter is just really good at fending for themselves uh there's really nothing else to say obviously their abilities make them probably the best class in the game um but even without them, they're still a very strong class because, you know, you have, like, Commando P, uh, EP, and as I said before, Agent P on Law. So, you know, that's why they're so strong. Coming up at number four is going to be the Foot Soldier class. A lot like the Pea Shooters, the Foot Soldier class is one of the strongest classes in the game with their abilities, and without, they're still very good. Not being able to get onto heights does, uh, do a lot. Uh, however, they just deal so much damage with their primary that it's impossible to put them any lower than this. They're just super good with their primaries and honestly, if I went to a game, I could probably drop like 30, 35 kills with these guys without their abilities. But yeah, really solid class even without their abilities. Coming in at number 3 is going to be Colonel Corn. Colonel Corn, I don't even think I need to explain myself. Colonel Corn is super good with his abilities and even without he's still amazing regular corn deals around 11 and 10 damage with his primary uh you know mob cob basically the same thing barbecue corn uh pops corn eh he's still really good though party corn you know how party corn is and especially with his party time and then commando corn uh, also deals a ton of damage so you know without their primaries they're still pretty good because they all have 150 health so that makes them very tanky but yeah honestly corns solid class i have to say very good class and without their abilities, obviously, um, it takes a huge toll on them for them to not have their abilities. But really, just without their abilities, they are still a very usable class. Coming in at the number two spot is going to be the Imp class. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the only reason why the Imps are at number two is because of that stupid double jump. That is the only reason, and maybe because they're small hitbox. But that double jump almost gives them number one. Uh, that double jump is just, it's super hard to hit an Imp when they're double jumping and if it's like a z7 imp you better say goodbye because that thing will kill you super fast uh they do have low health but as i said small hitbox and that double jump really just make them one of the best classes even without their abilities it is crazy what you can do without an imp's abilities i think that double jump just kind of carries this class uh, without their abilities absolutely solid class without their abilities but you know what else is an absolutely solid class without their abilities you know what i think in my opinion if they had their abilities taken away they would play out exactly the same as they do now you know what it's gonna be because i haven't said it yet but the number one class in the game who i think would be the best without their abilities is going to be the rose class let me tell you why sitting in the back having home and even going close up you can still deal a ton of damage now you might say oh well you know pyre could be up here or uh cactus but they don't have homing you can't just sit in the back and homing them the thing is roses are some of the most annoying little shits ever and not because of their abilities you never see a rose being annoying because of her abilities maybe her enigma running away but you will never see them be annoying because they go to fight you or time snare you 
you always find them annoying because they're sitting in the back spamming their primary. And this is exactly why they're number one, because their primary carries this class. This is probably the one class in the entire game that their primary is the thing that carries them. So yeah, Rosa's absolutely busted class. I mean, this on I, I, I'm going to be honest, if their abilities were completely taken away, I, I don't think they'd play any different. Except for running away with Enigma, but if you don't get too close up, then, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Roses, you annoying little shits. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to drop a like. If you guys want to subscribe, leave down your opinions below. I want to know what you guys think. Without further ado, see you guys in the next video. Peace.